And in the next two sessions, we're going to show you how to examine your skin and how to examine your lymph node groups. Um, with my, the whole idea is, un, unfortunately, you're at a slightly higher risk of growing a new form of skin cancer of any sort. That's what, that's what evidence shows about having had a melanoma. Your skin's got that, you've had that sun exposure, your skin's got that potential. And obviously you need to examine your lymph node groups as well. And the whole point of this is that eventually your appointments will get less and less and then you'll be discharged. And it, it would be utterly pointless to, to be discharged and not know how to keep an eye on things for yourself. And so this is for you now, but it's also for you in the future to try and help you be much more aware as you go forward. So over to Andrew and uh, we'll skin examination. Thanks. Um, so we've sort of covered this already to some degree in the, the first lecture I gave. So you've got a pretty good idea of what you're looking out for. And the, it, as, as Oliver said, it's really down to you and uh, the people around you. So if you're alone, then you need a full-length mirror. So you can be looking at yourself in the mirror and actually having a look at what's going on. But ideally, you want to be doing it with someone else. And um, you want to be getting to know what your skin looks like. And um, what we're going to do today is, actually, we've got some live models who are going to be able to do this. And one of the things I'm going to show you is actually just take a picture on your phone. Get somebody else to take a picture on your phone of your back. Because then you can see this, this young lady has got the, the curve of moles on her back. So when, a number of years later, a mark appeared, there's no doubt that there's something new there. That one looks fairly obvious, but actually sometimes something new appears. Like, Was it there before? Was it not? A number of people I've met who are unsure. So, oh, I don't know how long it's been there, Doctor. I just noticed it in the shower the other day. I might have been there all my life. I'm not sure. So actually, if you've got a baseline photograph, even if it's taken by you, because smartphones these days are so fantastic, you can get a really good quality picture. Just save it on your phone, and you've got a baseline. And that's really useful for doctors as well. So let's bring up our models. We're very lucky to have uh, Neil and Emily here. And um, it's, we're going to try and um, sort of go through what to look for. So you can switch across to the... Uh, yeah. So, the cameras are coming from that way, so if we sort of look in that sort of direction. Um, the, uh, so ideally, what we want to be doing is looking at the whole body. And um, I asked Emily to bring her smartphone up so they can pretend to take pictures of each other. But ultimately, you know, I don't expect you to be taking detailed morphological pictures. You know, what you want to do is just have a, a gross picture of the body, a gross picture of the leg, a gross picture of the back, a gross picture of the face. So you can see, has one of these moles doubled in size? Has one of these moles not been there before and is now there? That's really useful information when you show that to your doctor as well. So who's going to volunteer to be <laughs> the first model? So thank you very much for doing this. So really, you, you want to be looking at the whole body. And um, melanomas can occur anywhere. Typically, they're going to occur on sun-exposed sites, but they don't always. Um, and so if I was going to start with someone, I usually start with the face. And this is something I try, I try to encourage. If, if you've got a partner or a husband or wife, I encourage them to actually get to know each other's body. And it usually causes a few raised eyebrows. You sort of say, you know, take your clothes off in front of each other. You know, get to know each other's bodies feel each other's bodies, you know, really get to know each other. And they, they, I think some of the men are often feeling quite excited about this when they get told about <laughs> that. So, so, so you start with the face, and you're looking at the whole face, without makeup on, of course. Um, and <laughs> behind the ears, and actually it's worth looking, actually I should show you around here, because you can actually see around there. So you're looking behind the ears, Basal cell carcinomas often occur a little tucked away behind there as well. And then the way typically in medical examinations, you sort of work your way around the body. I typically start with a hand. I, actually, what I should, should first say is actually take a step back and actually just have a look overall. Can you see anything that looks different? Take a step back. Just have a general look around. You know, have a, a good look around. Does anything stand out? And that, that's what, you know, and that's that ugly duckling. 
And then you then work your way around the body. So typically start with the hand, both sides. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> That's all right. There we go. So hands, both sides. Work up the arms. Again, both sides. And then you're looking down there. You might subtly have a look underneath or... <laughs> I'm not going to do this now on stage, don't worry. <laughs> and then spin around. And um, you then have a look at the back. And again, you can then have a, a good look. And you're looking all the way around. Again, you would probably fold the, the knickers up or pull them down slightly. But again, look. You can either get someone to lie on a bed for this bit, looking at the legs, or if you're able to, crouch down and have a look. And then I say, give me a twirl. And then if you spin around, you can have a look at the front as well. And then, as the, uh, the middle nurse has pointed out, look between the toes as well. So actually, you know, make an effort to look in between the toes to see if anything's hiding under there. And of course, the soles of the feet as well. And in doing that, you've looked at the whole body. So you can model doing it on each other, if you like. Maybe you should put your clothes on and then uh, give Neil a chance. To... So, you're going to start off by just having a general look around. Perhaps take a photograph as well, so you've got a picture of what, what his body looks like, and then you've got a baseline as well. Worried, you can get a bit advanced because the smart the smartphones do zoom in. So, I mean, I, I, I sometimes say get a ruler out or something yes. like that. I mean, I, I, yeah. I know it's 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 moving up, but I think if you've you can say to somebody, look, there's, you've got these two moles that we're just particularly worried about. Get your smartphone, put a ruler next to it, take a picture. Uh, you don't want to keep whipping things off if you if you don't need Absolutely. to. Absolutely, that, that's a really good bit yeah. of advice, and I do say that sometimes. I'll I'll sort of look at someone and say, you know. I agree that one stands out a little bit more than the others. It really doesn't look worrying under the dermatoscope. But you know, keep an eye on it. So take a photograph, keep it on your smartphone, and then um, you can then use it as a future reference. But one important thing, if you're going to do that, it's often worth making a little, like draw on the body an A, take a gross photograph A as to where it is, particularly if you're going to take several pictures. So if you spin around for a minute, you know, and for example, if there was one on his back there, so I've got this mole here, we would draw an A there, a B there, and a C there. Because if you've then taken your smartphone picture of A, B, and C, you know which one you're referring to. Yeah. Because you get pictures, I, I, I sometimes look at medical photography pictures from in the notes from historically, and there's lots of very lovely pictures of, uh, you know, very detailed pictures of moles, but it doesn't actually tell you where they were. You know, there's several on the back, you don't know which one's which. So if you are going to do that, you are going to take that next step and actually go and actually take a, a more detailed picture with a ruler perhaps against it, then do make sure you label it first A, B, C. Take your gross picture, then take the detailed picture so you know what's what. So you can carry on. So, and Neil's got a scalp that needs looking at as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sort of test his knees. Yes, yeah. Yeah, you're looking for something that's new or something that stands out that looks different. And again, as you get, that's the key thing is that you're, you're now getting to know Neil's body now. You're getting to know his skin. You're getting to recognise is there anything that's new, different, but. The first time you're looking at it, of course, is the first time you've seen him dressed like this. You're, <laughs> you're, you're now, you know, but, you know, you're taking an interest in the actual skin itself, and you're sort of working your way around him. And if we look at him here, look, he's got a couple of smaller moles just on the back here, and you can see you know, he's got a few little moles here, he's got a few moles there, he's got some of these moles here. This is perhaps a reflection of some sun exposure he's had over his life. A mole there. You spin around Neil. We have a look at his body here, look, he's got a fleshy mold just there. And again, you know, you sort of note it. You know, it's there. It's nothing to worry about, but it's there. 
And so, you know, if, for example, something else appeared next to you, oh, no, there, was, there wasn't anything next to that flesh and mold. So you're getting to know his body. So perhaps once a month, you know, strip off with your partner and have a look, get to know each other. And you're not going to be able to memorise their body first thing, you know, the first time you see it in this context. And actually you're going to get to know it. Because actually if you see someone daily, you're not necessarily going to take a great deal of interest in the, in the individual detail. But the more you get to see someone, the more likely you are to know if something's new. And that's where the photographs are really helpful as well. So again, he's coming down looking at his legs. He's got a little mole there. You know, he's got a mole there. But again, don't worry. Yeah, you can start to spot things. Can you give us a twirl, Neil? And you stop there and you have a look at his legs. He's got perhaps a little mole there. Exactly, yeah. So you're starting to spot a few moles on his body. You wouldn't necessarily need to take detailed pictures of all of the moles, because then that's putting pressure on you to try and make a diagnosis. But if you've got you know, a, a picture of his back, and then a, suddenly there's a mole that sort of seems to stand out that wasn't there before, then you're going to start saying, that needs to be looked at. Often the scalp is, just going to Imogen's point, is feel, because, yes. you know, uh, my hairdresser said this, or I can feel this. Uh, obviously, men, particularly with thinning scalps, it becomes more obvious to see, and they're more at risk. If you've got a thick head of hair, you're less likely to have a, anything in it. Um, but, but certainly hairdressers are useful resources. It's a question of putting them all together, isn't it? You know, you've got to... Yeah, and these two models don't have many models. You no. take me, for example, I have hundreds of models. Yeah. And I can see that the We don't necessarily need to take lots of regular photos. You just need to take the one baseline <laughs> and then just bring that baseline photo out each time. Because actually, you're going to... If you're looking at a photo and you take a photo every month, you're perhaps going to just see a slight evolution. If you look at the photo from the month before, the evolution will be not that much different. Whereas if you're a photo from two years ago, and then you look at your photo from two years ago, and something has then changed, you're more likely to see a, a more dramatic difference. Uh, so to add, inside everybody's delicate pretty bag um, that you're taking home is a skin dye that's been produced by the brain and Carol where you could put dots on the body shapes of where every single existing model is on the body, and then next time you look at the back of it, you can then see I've got one there that wasn't there before. Any other points that you want to make? What about the Louises? Any other points from the CNS on your skin checks that... No. Okay, great. Well, thanks very much. Are you just put, pop your dressing gown on. I think Oliver's going to use yeah. it now as well, aren't you? I am. Actually, any, any, any questions to Andrew about skin examination? We might as well, is that okay? Can we just... Because it's just... It's, otherwise, we'll be on, off, on, yeah, okay. off. So. I just wanted to ask quickly, you know, how you feel about all these um, new apps that are there. Okay. That is current. So the, the question was, uh, I really appreciate if you're back and then I've heard, the question was, what do I think of the new apps, which I think you're uh, particularly alluding to the apps which will offer to make a diagnosis for you. Um, I don't think at the moment that they are accurate enough to give you 100% reliability. I think if they're, if, certainly if I, if I was making an app like that, I would have it set an extremely, extremely, uh, sort of uh, high sensitivity, such that you know it's going to pick up anything that looks even vaguely abnormal. Uh, you, you'd have to you know, you'd have to be very brave to declare that something is benign using just algorithms. Um, so, at the moment, personally, I, I think that actually showing a doctor is probably a good idea. Sorry, that was my Oh, sorry. Hi. As a stage four patient, should you still have skin checks? Well, I think you still are at risk of developing a new, a new skin lesion. Um, uh, and that's, that's what I wanted. I wondered if you are still at risk of, of having course. a... Yes. Oh, yeah. Because in Cardiff, the um, consultant refused to see me after a request from my GP. Well, you, your risk is lifetime. Yes. Yeah, but... but um, 
I'm, 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 I would have thought a stage four patients are on some form of regular follow-up. Are they not? Are you not on any? Not under dermatology. Under okay. Oncology, yes. Okay. But not and the oncology don't do skin checks. Yeah, no. I, I, no. I've, I've got a number of patients who we sort of share because the oncologists. Yeah, the, the, my patient actually jokes about. He says, "Isn't the oncologist a doctor?" <laughs> he's, he's supposed to be able to look at things as well, but he, he says, no, no, I'm just an oncologist. I just give you the drugs, and then someone else looks after everything else. So I could go back and say, to, my GP is very supportive, yes. and despite this letter, say, you know, various people say that it's yes. still possible to get. So what, what if, you, if you've spotted something new, and if you, if you don't, well, know, when so you, the GP can refer you on the two-week wait. So I mean, that's, okay. Cheers. Can I ask you a question to follow that up? Then what do you think about the GP with a special interest in each practice? There's usually one which has a dermatological interest or training about undertaking the skin check for, 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 for this lady in particular. Is, is that a reasonable other solution or do you think it's always better to, to go back to have a dermatological skin check in hospital setting? I think it depends on the GPSI in question. I mean, some GPSIs are specialists at inflammatory skin disease, eczema and so on, and they would not feel comfortable making that assessment. Yeah. Others see lesions all the time and are perhaps more surgically orientated and probably would feel reasonably comfortable in making an assessment. And if they were then, I'm sure they'd then refer up. So I think, I think it very much depends on the individual. I did uh, request first seeing the nurse who I used to see, and then um, she said, or the computer says no, can I can I just build on what Vicky said because um, I'm also stage four. I've had three primaries, um, and the last two were missed by a nurse. And I now see a consultant a consultant dermatologist privately every three months, and she gives me the full uh, once over. Should maybe take this last question, if that's okay, and then we can move on and that's good. Take, take a whole load at the end. Is that all right? Yeah, because otherwise my heels are going to break. That's why I, I was worried about you, Imogen. I didn't want your ankles coming over. Sorry, just following on with uh, what you were saying about the apps. Absolutely agree about the diagnostic apps. But there are some apps that are there to help you um, photograph your body. The University of Michigan Dermatology Department have a free app <coughs> called UM Skin Check. And it takes you through, it's got a little outline of a body, um, which when, when you put your phone or whatever device onto camera, it superimposes this body uh, outline on top so you can make sure that every single part of your body gets photographed. So it's not diagnostic, but so there are some apps out there that can actually help you structure any photographs that you're taking to make sure you get all of it, uh, if that's of any help. Well, it probably is, because actually if, if they're... If your phones are anything like my phones and your filing system for photographs is anything like it on my phone, it will disappear somewhere in a moment, in the moments section of your phone. It'll be like, where is it? So if you've got an app like that that stores your photos specifically in one site, that could make life easier for you, certainly. Thank you, Helen. Thank you very much, Andrew Burney. Thanks, models.